good morning we have discussed about various forms we have discussed about various criterion what's next next we are going to discuss about the plant characteristics here let me tell you again i'll take the analogy of the medical sciences doctor knows your disease doctor knows what is to be done now it has to be supplemented with a recommended or prescribed medicine here it is all the more important that the doctor knows about each and every medicine that is going to cure you if they don't know much about it then it will become a sort of you know wild shots by which they are trying here my objective is i'll be discussing about the plant characteristics you will find that when i'll talk about the characteristics many of the items i have already started discussing in the criterion because that that automatically falls into place but here i will go a little sequentially so the plant characteristics what is that characteristics what is the plant and how is that plant manifesting that is what is the characteristics each plant will have its own intrinsic characteristics and also it will have its some attributes which we want to explore and exploit in our landscape that is why this study of the plant characteristics comes into play so before we are you know we know about the attributes of characteristics we must know the id or identity of that particular tree so in that characteristics i'm giving a list here you will see the first thing i need to know the identity identity or identification means how do i do i know which tree i'm now discussing about it is like that so identity or identification is very very important then comes spread now these are again identity is the first but the next other items which are coming they don't come in the order of priority in my list but i'll discuss spread then comes height then profile I'll, I'll detail it out then habit then foliage then root structure then growth soil requirement light requirement temperature relations water requirement bark character cattle proneness or vandalisms susceptibility to the wind flowering attributes fruiting attributes pollution sensitivity or resistance termite sensitivity or resistance and the utilities and application now if you look back to the earlier lecture that i have given if you have if you retrieve your whatever you, i have discussed you'll find that i have talked about this in some form or other but essentially here i'm focused here i'm trying to say that now whatever its criterion by which i'll be selecting that but uh, first of all i must know a plant well enough so that i can make good use of it it's just like the medical representative is trying to explain the positive effects and the side effects of a medicine to a doctor doctor is not mr know all the manufacturer of medicine comes to the doctor through the representatives and the representative explains the entire characteristics or attributes of that particular medicine including their side effects similar is the situation where we are now when you are trying to know about a plant what all you need to know in terms of its characteristics and attributes this is where i am now i'll be going to them individually one by one the first and the foremost is identity it is identity means which plant we are talking about and then how do we identify the tree so this is identity of the plants this will take a little longer discussion because here there are many things which generally you are not aware of you know a tree you know a name you may be knowing some traits or characteristics of this but how it is represented it is important to know about it so i'll go a little detail on this okay the first and foremost identity of a tree is by its scientific or botanical name whatever name you have been hearing about that particular tree but scientific and botanical name technically you must know when you are prescribing because it may so happen some of the trees 
will be called by different names in different locations and maybe the same name used for different trees in different locations. So, no risk taking in this. My first advice is always follow the scientific name when you prescribe along with that you give the other names. So, whenever identity is being said there are three ways the identity is given. One is the scientific and botanical name and the next is the common English name. Why common English name? Because generally since English is a common language all over the world and most of most of the many other people are talking in this language. They try to see what is the name by which it can be best represented. Other than that what we have? We have the local name. Local name is very 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 risky to be pres for prescription purposes because local name is generated by local dialects. The same tree may be named differently in the same state in the different districts in the different regions guided by the dialectical differences. So, what happens is how will you use it? It is something like this. My advice would be if suppose you are selecting a plant and you are prescribing it you give it its scientific name. Along with that you add the local name. You will find the people who are working in that locality they are familiar with this, but when the tree has to be really procured it has to be procured from the nursery or horticulture sections and they know this tree of course, by local name, but they always refer this with respect to the scientific name. So, this scientific name or botanical name is the first that you must know and this these names are little complicated you know slightly high sounding names like you know chemical compositions and all. Common English name is for references. So, if you do not give local name still your project can be executed, but if you do not give scientific name I have you know skepticism whether your project is going to be rightly executed. Okay. Now, so it is better to be discussed about scientific and botanical names. Whenever these names are being given you know there are certain ways by which the nomenclatures are given and they are universally same rule. What you do is for any plant you give a family name. See very interestingly it matches with our human name nomenclature your personal names it matches with that. The personal name like say you have a surname which is a family name. In some regions of the country the surname is given first and your name is given next. In some other parts your name is given first and the surname is given next and in some parts there is a your name then there is a middle name additional and the surname. In some part you will find that there is a name surname which corresponds to the location where one belongs to then the father's name and then your name. So, this kind of things become complex whenever we are trying to see different names of different people in our country itself. For trees it is something like you know you have to have a family. So, a tree become belongs to a family that family may have multiple other such kind of genus. Okay. So, the family name is one then the species name. So, every species is going to be under a family and the species name will have two parts one is called genus and another is called epithet. Genus is its genera the name which is derived from the family okay. and the epithet is its characteristics some special characteristics something you know by some you know uh, adjectives it is expressed. I will give you one or two examples you will understand very very interesting and more you go deep into it you will find it is very very exciting as well to know about the plants in such form. I will give you a few examples to correlate. See ficus religiosa is the species name. Okay they belong to Mauritia family. So, if I try to find out what is the Ficus religiosus family name it is Mauritia. 
the Mauritius if it is then ficus religiosa then you will find there, are, there is another ficus ficus elastica which is also belonging to the same family name sorry just there is one small spelling mistake all right. Now ficus elastica let me compare between these two ficus is a genera or genus of that particular plant they are common for both the plants. So, if I see the species name it has two parts usually the first part and the second part ficus is one part and the religious is another part ficus is another part and elastica is another part they belong to the same family. We will find many such examples in the plant groups or the say plants uh, identity. If I understand genus okay, ficus is a genus then what is the religious and elastica. If I tell you these two plants you will automatically understand that well as a difference. Now, let us see in terms of epithet religiosa does it sound like any other common English word called religion yes it does it does elastica does it sound familiar to elastics elastic yes it does. Now, if I tell you the local name of this the ficus religiosa local name is people tree people tree see I am giving all those names which are mostly available in North Indian because I am not very familiar with the South Indian dialectical name of all these trees. So, it is difficult for me to say the right word though I have been hearing say I found that in South India different regions have different names for this. So, I am not taking that risk I am trying to say what is most commonly available in the Northern India part and then I am giving example with respect to that. So, the ficus religiosa is people tree you know how it gets generated the second part the first part is generating from the genera genus second part is representing some one of the characteristics or speciality of this particular tree religious is religion connected with religion and people tree is the one which is a kind of fig tree which you know which is worshipped and since it has a religious value so whoever first scientist who identified this tree and ultimately bring brought this into the you know compendium of plant lists in which the person must have thought that if i add the religious as a second part as an adjective to it or maybe a representation of that particular tree it holds best so the religious are somebody would have could have given a different name for religious but the ficus wouldn't have changed so similarly look at the ficus elastica here the plant this is rubber plant rubber plant which grows to a great height great size and the leaf looks like you know if i draw it's like this this kind it looks like a rubber plate a rubber sheet and also if you hold it the thickness and the quality of such it looks like a rubber sheet thick rubber sheet. So, just just to give a representation that this is a rubber kind of thing elastic word came into the mind of the scientist and added elastic as a part of it. I did not name one more in this I am just trying to give that as a comparison there is a plant a tree called ficus bengalensis this is religiosa this is elastica there is a tree called ficus bengalensis. Now, if suppose it is ficus bengalensis means they belong to the same family and then what is the meaning of this bengalensis you know interestingly this who the scientist who found out this first he identified this tree in a region called Bengal in India eastern part of India. This tree originally the researcher when he found out and ultimately researched on it and then added to the scientific names of the universe of the plants then in that case it was regarded or respected as the place of origin. So, Bengalensis ficus group ficus genera Bengalensis this is common English name is banyan tree.
local Hindi name is Vargat and the local Bengali name is Vat. Now, see this Vargat and Vat has not been represented over here. It is the scientist's wish that how he is going to explain or express this part of it. So, then it brings us to one point that means the tree will have any plant will have two parts. Most often since it is a name most often when you find the mention of this name in continuity of a sentence then most often it is written in italics just to make it different. It should not look like another English word it is not an English word it is a English it is a name okay. for which if suppose this has to be written this will be written as ficus then Bengalian says in italics follow this rule you will find that you will get the idea of it ficus bengalensis and another thing is unlike our names where the initial is capital and also the initial well, the first letter of the surname is capital unlike that here the first letter is capital the second letter is not capital. So, whenever you will find a name which is generally in the midst of a sentence with the italics like this then you should think that probably it is a name of a tree okay. it may be a name of a medicine also. So, ficus bengalensis this is how the whole thing is represented. So, what happens is whenever you are trying to see the identity of this tree you must know about the family you must focus on to the genera or genus, but very much focus on to this which will give you some clue of that tree. Let us see there may be one more example. See Apocynaceae is the family name of a tree called Plumeria alba. Plumeria is a tree which is known as pagoda tree. Plumeria has multiple varieties one is Plumeria alba and this Plumeria rubra. Plumeria is common then where lies the difference alba and the rubra two different trees looking alike but there are lots of visible or distinguishable differences by which you know if you are connoisseur of it if you know if you are researching on this you definitely can see oh this is, this is looking different okay. There may be certain things common there may be certain things common there may be the trunk structure is common the habit is common the leaf structure is common, but flower profile is also common, but the flower color is different alba is the Latin word meaning whitish okay, albus. Now, this plumeria alba has a flower which is whitish with a yellow at the center spot plumeria rubra is a similar kind of flower fragrance also may be similar, but it is rubber means red. So, it is reddish color okay, that makes a difference. So, whenever you are trying to see the plants just do not simply blindly take these names try to know its identity with respect to its characteristics as well. There is another set of tree which I am showing here see Bignonia C A is basically the family name of Tabebuia spectabilis. Tabebuia is a genus spectabilis means spectacular very attractive showing showy type it looks good. Okay. Tabebuia if you see that tree spectabilis one then you will find the whole tree is highly contorted a very lanky panky tree you know very thin kind of tree foliage is also not very attractive but the flowers are highly attractive yellow color. So, whenever you see a Tabebuia spectabilis the flowers it attracts. Now, when it comes to it is op another option the Tabebuia rosei there is a tree which is you know which looks very dissimilar to the Tabebuia spectabilis very large tree very tall tree quite organized Tabebuia spectabilis will be uh, slightly contorted Tabebuia rosei is very straight erect and wide and it has pinkish or rosy means rosy means pinkish flower. Okay. So, it is so whenever you use the term called Tabebuia if you use only say I will be planting Tabebuia you are half right you do not know that which plant basically is it spectabilis or rosy. 
if by mistake you, you wanted rosy and the somebody has planted uh, spectabilis, it is just totally different things will be created. So, be very, very cautious and careful about the identity of the tree. So, my first suggestion is try to know the scientific and botanical names of all the trees that you want or plants that you want to handle in your landscape. If possible, try to know the common English name if possible. If you do not, do not lose hearts and do not get depressed. No, no, I do not require because ultimately prescription is going to be with the scientific names. It will be always you know beneficial if you know the local name to communicate to the local people that what plant you are saying. But since like in India, we have so many languages and the same tree will be given you know called by so many names, it is really very, very difficult to know the names of all these languages. But what I do is, if suppose I am designing a landscape in a particular region, and then I try to find out what is the local language and then look in the local language, what is that particular tree called and try to record it. Okay. There are some studies, some researches I have found in which they have tried it, but they are dialectically so much variable from region to region that it becomes a difficult task, neither it becomes very scientific approach. It is only for communication, but not for technical use. So, this is it. So, you use the identity. Now, coming to the second part of it, the first part the plant scientists, horticulturist or botanist they will handle. I am very much concerned about the second part of it. Second part has to be understood well. How it is generated, how it is given name. Most often it is representing some of the characteristics like say here it is read this again. An adjective or phrase expressing a quality or attribute regarded as characteristics of the plant, some attribute by which it is. Okay, what are those attributes? Is this list. In terms of scientific names, it is Latin or Greek terms used for plant characteristics. It may be used as a prefix or as a suffix. It may be represented in terms of seasons of the year. So, when I am talking about this, basically I am I am referring to the second part of the name. Second part of the name may be representing something about the seasons of the year or, but there cannot be two names for the same plant mind it. There has to be a unique name. The unique name is genus and then the next part. The next part has to be unique name. Generally that there are I have found that there are sometimes two names for the same plants, but one has to be very cautiously using it knowing that which one is the best representing it. Okay. It may be seasons of the year represented or emphasis or degree or kind. It may be size and shape means chiefly as prefixes in compound words what happens is size and shape sometime you know it gets added to another word like an example I will tell you. You know Devadar tree, Devadar tree is that which has a leaf like this kind of leaf you must have seen this this kind of leaf devadar tree and the name of that particular tree one of the devadar is polyelthia longifolia polyelthia is a genera longifolia has two parts longi means long folia means foliage long foliage this is what is now here the longi is basically the prefix of the foliage so sometimes so whenever we are using size and shape essentially as prefix or most often it is prefix. Then regions or habitats means which region it is, what kind of habitat it is. Then place names as I said Bengalensis, Bengal, sometimes the regions, character, form and habit, overall character, overall form, habit parts of the plants, sometime even with the parts of the plants. It is you know which one will be used that you do not know some scientist who has identified this tree or plant and then brought into the dictionary of plants or the you know, identity of the plants. It is the way the scientist thought best representing it. So, you have nothing to do what you have to do is you have to learn it, you have to know about these plants. Then the color even the numbers and quantity. I will go into the detail of this little more, so that you have a clear idea about it. I will go a little fast on this. 
See, I will give a list of plants in terms of seasons of the year. I will not read out all, but this list will be available to you through this particular screen. So, it is basically you have to read it over and over again, but I will draw your attention to some of the specific names which are very commonly being used for commentaries which you have seen or you might be seeing it. But what it is trying to represent in terms of seasons of the year is this. So, this is a Latin name and it means summer. See all these names are not very easy to pronounce of course, but let us say autumnalis represents autumn, astivalis represents summer, vernalis represents spring. So, if you find any name which has any one of these parts then definitely it is representing season of the year for that particular plant. This is how you should look at it. Okay. Now, I am going a little further faster in terms of emphasis, degree or kind. If it is prefix like if it is used as atro then it means dark, if it is simple it is ever or always, if it is sub then it is somewhat. I hope this now you are understanding what I am trying to say. In terms of suffixes if it is bondus abundant, if it is escans resembling, if it is ferus bearing, isimus very, oedus similar to, osus with or bearing, eulus is somewhat. So, basically what happens is if you find a name which has two parts in which you have found that this as a part of you know second name part of the second name as a suffix then you should understand that try to find out from this list that it is Latin name given to this. This entire list is given in one of the very famous book written by Gordon Halfraker called Horticulture. I would advise this I have given in my reference list that I would advise all of you to read that particular book, wonderful book to know about the plants to the great detail. I have found it to be one of the finest book, I think it was published sometime in 79 or 80 that time. That means, this book has been published then and if you go through that particular book you will be definitely getting all this information. Okay. Then in terms of size and shape primary prefix of compound words, alti means tall, angularis is angular, angusti is narrow, brevi is short. See you remember the word called brevity, brevity means short shortness the short, elongates is elongated, giantius is huge. Gracilis is slender, grandis is large and lati is wide. Now, I am just naming one since I have got this example over here, see lati. There is a tree called Madhuka latifolia. The Madhuka latifolia you know this particular tree has fruits which is used for making country liquor. The fruit smells and that fruit if it is prepared well it becomes a country liquor called mahua. So, the common local name is mahua, botanical name is or scientific name is madhuka latifolia. Latifolia is now the second part of the name and the latifolia is now split into two parts is latifolia, lati is wide folia is foliage. Now, do you get the idea? Madhuka latifolia is having wide foliage that is how the names are generated. Some more longi, polyalthia longi folia just now I said polyalthia longi folia long foliage. Okay. So, macro is large, maximus is very large mega is large, micro is small, minimus is very small, ortho straight, pervy is small, tenui is slender. You will if you now try to find out various names of the list of from the plant list, then try to read through the second part of it. The genus part you do not focus much, but of course, if you are trying to know the plant you have to know both, but you focus on the right hand part of it and then you try to see does it match with any of this characteristics somewhere or the other. Then you will get the clear idea how to register that also in your mind. Okay. 
then another set is regions or habitats. If it is aero means off or in air. Okay. Agrarius is of fields, agrestis is of fields, alpinus is alpine, aquaticus is aquatic, australis is southern, borealis is northern. See basically regions, mountainous is mount of mountains. So, if you find a tree with something, some indication of mountainous, then you must immediately infer that this must be growing in the mountains. Or if you find Australis as a part of the second name, then definitely you should say it is southern region of the world. Occidentalis is western, Oceanias is of the sea that is coastal, Orientalis is eastern. So, all these eastern, western, northern, southern is with respect to the earth. Riverius is of river banks, Rupestris is rock loving, Succesatilis is rock loving, Silvaticus is of woods, Silvestris is also woods and Terrestris is of earth. There are some names which you will get, which will have a part called Americanus that means it is from America. Germanicus is from Germany, Bengalensis is from Bengal, Indica is from India. So, I hope by now you understand that how these nomenclatures are given. Character, form and habit. I will go a little quickly now. Acuminatus is tapering, acutus is sharp pointed, alatus is winged. I am just naming one more one tree here, alatus. This is a tree called Starculia alata. This tree I will discuss when I will talk about the plants in detail in my next series of discussion, series of um, lectures. Starculia alata is a tree which has you know the the tree looks like wings you know it spreads. So, when the name has been given the alata word has been added to it. Two ways of alata you can see in this wings in terms of its branching and also it has its roots which are of buttress nature buttress roots spreads like wings. Okay. So, alata annuals is annual arborescent Arborescence is woody tree like, barbatus is barbed, bionis is biennial, capitatus is headed, carnosus is fleshy, coloratus is colored, columnaris is columnar, communis is common or general, cornatus is horned. I would suggest I am just reading it for you so that you know it enters your ear and you get a little idea about this, but I will suggest that you are downloading this particular lecture, read it over and over and over again so that you get idea about this. Crenatus is scalloped, Christus is crested. So, similarly like different others I am just you know going, going quickly through this, so that I do not have to spend much time on this. Densus, dentatus you know dentatus is toothed, dentatus dental tooth. So, you always get a correlation between this. Erectus is upright erect. Okay. Esculentus is edible, eczemius is distinguished or unusual and filiferous is having threads. So, if suppose you find somewhere the name called filiferous, then you must understand that somewhere either in the leaves or in the barks or somewhere thread like things will come in. Okay. Then character form and habit in which you have double flowered, floridus is flowering, fragilis is fragile and fruticosus is shrubby or bushy, glabra is smooth. Let me name another tree, Pongamia glabra. Pongamia glabra is karanj, karanj tree is large tree, glabra is smooth. Okay. What is smooth in that tree? If you take a leaf and look at it, it is so shiny smooth, so glabrous. Okay. And scientists when he was trying to give a name to it, he made it glabra, Pongamia glabra. The name is given in that form. Okay. Similarly, different others. Hortensis, let me give another name for another tree. Hortensis, garden type, there is a tree called, a tree called Millingtonia hortensis. Millingtonia hortensis is common English name is or even the local name is Akash Neem, highly fragrant flowering tree, tall tree with the leaves with a different kind of parted kind and 
has small white flowers hanging like bells. You can always smell this around. If, uh, if there is one tree in your region, definitely you will get the nice smell. But only thing is you have to really take pain to find out which tree is really spreading that fragrance. Millingtonia hortensis, which is garden type, usually placed in the corner of your garden property. Okay. Hybridus is mixed, then Incanus is hoary and then Lacinietus is short. Okay. So, similarly the other names, let me see if any other examples which I can find out from here, which I can say. Okay. Look at this where my cursor is officinalis medicinal. You know Aumla, Aumla is a medicinal fruit that you use for digestive ordering. That is name is Emblica officinalis. Emblica name resembles with our Aumla in Hindi. So, Emblica officinalis. Officinalis, the moment you find the officinalis as a name, part of the name, then immediately you should understand this tree must be having a medicinal value, whether it is a fruit or the leaf or the branches or whatever. Okay. That is how the whole thing is. Some more quickly. Pendulus is hanging, Polyalthea pendula is one such. So, you go through all this list as I have given over here. Let me see if any name which I can bring to your knowledge with respect to the common trees, because all this trees name I am saying is common. Okay. All right. This is by this kind of character form and habit. It may be with respect to the parts of the plants. If it is andrus, it is stamen. If it is anthus, it is flower. If it is carpus, it is fruit. Collis is stem. Floris is flower. Folius is leaf. Longifolia, you remember? Longifolia, long foliage, long leaf. Okay. Lobus is lobe. Peas is foot. Petalus is petal. If you go through this list, you will definitely have a clear idea. Some more quickly, I will go to it. Albus is white. You remember just now I said uh, Plumeria alba? Alba is white. Let us see some more. Okay, Azurus is sky blue, Ceruleus is dark blue. I am just trying to see which name can be referred for your list of tree. Okay, here I do find. You remember I said the Plumeria albus, so the flower is whitish. Plumeria rubra, ruber is reddish. Plumeria, two different species with two different characteristics. One has the white flower and the other has a red flower. You remember just now I said Tabebia rosei is a rosy color, pinkish color. Okay, that is how the whole thing is. So when you try to understand this, you will find this gives a very interesting, clear idea about it. The last of these nomenclature thing is in terms of numbers and quantity. Okay, if it is uniflorus, it means one. Biflorus is two. Tri Trilobus is three. So similarly, uh, different other. So Decapetulus is 10, but see this hetero means various, multi means many, posi means few, paucity you remember the word called paucity, posi means few and the poly means many. Okay. You remember that polyalthial longifolia, poly part is a part of the genus in which it is many. This is how the whole thing is. So, whenever you are trying to know about the plants, try to read through this, try to be more inquisitive about it more interested in it and you will know these. What is lying next is the characteristics and the attributes which I will be discussing in my next lecture. Thank you very much.